Hello and welcome to the CircuitPython Weekly for December 9th, 2019. I'm Scott and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython full time. CircuitPython is an easy beginner friendly version of Python for hardware. Python is a programming language that is excellent for beginners. So uh, by bringing that to hardware, we make uh, it easy to create hardware devices that do just what you want uh, easily and hopefully fun as well. Uh, this is a meeting we have every week on Mondays at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. It occurs on the Adafruit Discord channel, which everybody is invited to join uh, by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. Um, and this meeting happens at the time 11 p.m. or 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, just hop in the voice channel and we can uh, you can listen in. Um, this meeting is recorded, so be aware of that. Uh, it gets both the text chat of the CircuitPython channel and the voice chat gets recorded and posted to the Adafruit YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Adafruit, uh, so that other folks who can't make that meeting time are able to listen in. Uh, if you want to participate but can't make the meeting time, we, we do send a note doc out before the meeting where you can add info about what you've been working on in your hug reports, which I'll talk about a little bit in a bit. Um, but we can read that up for you if you can't make the meeting. Um, along with that, along with the recording, we have the note doc, and the note doc includes time codes, which tell you when in the video stream you can kind of skip into different discussions and stuff. Uh, so you'll hear me pause and, and take uh, time codes there. And then, um, yeah, so the meeting is run in five parts. We start with community news that Phil does, which is a... Uh, kind of a general tour of what's happened on the internet with CircuitPython, which is always really fun. Uh, it's a preview of the newsletter that goes out on Tuesday mornings, the Python for microcontrollers newsletter. You can sign up for that at adafruitdaily.com. Uh, after community news, we have state of CircuitPython and its, and its libraries, which is a kind of statistics objective uh, overview of how the project's going and how many people are, in, are involved. Uh, after that, we have the first of two round robins. The first one is hug reports, which is a chance to say thank you to folks for the work that they've been doing. Uh, I will start, and then we'll go down the list of the folks, folks in the voice chat, uh, intermingled with potentially folks who have let us know what their hug reports but uh, in the notes doc, but we're un unable to make the meeting. If you're in the voice chat and you either uh, don't want to speak, uh, let us know your text only, or if you're just listening in, let us know you're lurking. Um, and we'll just skip over you. I'm still happy to have you uh, for that. So after hug reports, we also have another round robin for status updates, which is uh, taking a little bit of time, a couple minutes to talk about what you've been working on and what you plan on working on in the coming week. And then that is great for people to give tips and tricks and things uh, for what you're working on. Uh, the last section we have is called In the Weeds, which is a chance to uh, just have any longer form discussions uh, and asking any questions that might have longer answers. That's a place for that as well. If you have topics for In the Weeds, um, what you can do is either drop them in the notes doc or uh, just type them into the text channel during the, the earlier parts of the meeting and the folks taking notes will snag those and put those in the weeds. And that is the meeting. It typically runs for about an hour, um, although we have been up to like an hour and 20 minutes. So um, if you can't make the whole meeting, but you do want to chime in, let us know and we can we can push you up uh, into the front of the line as well. So with that, let's take a time code and get going. I don't think I forgot any of the, the housekeeping stuff, but uh, let's kick it over to Phil for community news. Okay, thank you, Scott. In the chat, I just posted up um, a new graphic, 200 libraries. Congratulations, everybody. Yay, this is a big deal for us. We'll be celebrating this on our site, on our newsletters, on our shows. Um, there's over 200 libraries all together in CircuitPython land. You can take a look at circuitpython.org slash libraries, and you can take a look at it on GitHub. Um, we'll have even more. At the time of this writing, there's now 201. So good work, everybody. Some Circuit Python on hardware. This is the Bino Nova, and it's a multi-protocol USB host adapter. Uh, they contacted us, and we said, "Hey, like, it'd be really cool if you got Blink on that." And they did some pull requests, got it on there. So we're going to be stocking this in our store. And you can also check out the 
getting started guide over on their site. In the latest issue of Make Magazine, CircuitPython is in a couple of projects. Do check that out. It's in uh, it's on page 82, CircuitPython powered LED heart by Geekmon Projects. Also, Geekmon Projects is coming up with a line of light up bags. Uh, we have that on our site in the newsletter. Check that out. But in addition to this Make article, there was also CircuitPython ruler from DigiKey. So good to see that. Make, Make is back. So good to see some CircuitPython in the pages of Make. We have over 4,000-ish um, CircuitPython devices in the wild. Um, I'm not going to ruin it if you didn't get your inbox yet, but it's Bluetooth and it's CircuitPython, so you could probably guess. But um, you'll see a lot of cool projects, a lot of interesting things. Over the weekend, we posted up some um, Anx, some uh, <laughs> Apple Notification Center service demos. Uh, you'll see more of this soon, but it's a really neat way to get information off your Bluetooth devices onto something like a gizmo or a screen or something that is Bluetooth LE. Next up, uh, we joined the LoRa Alliance and a couple other things we've joined recently. One was a RISC V Foundation. Another one was the Zephyr Foundation and now LoRa. Um, we mostly just want to have access to the decision makers and more and make sure things like CircuitPython are in there. So we've already done a bunch of LoRa hardware and we've done a bunch of guides. So if this is something that's interesting to you um, and you have uh, LoRa access in your area, or you can um, look at the type of hardware that we stock here. Um, it's neat. It's decentralized. It's uh, you know using wireless without a carrier. So this is cool. So we're gonna send them over some ideas and more, so more people can use Python, Circuit Python, and more with LoRa. Next up, um, one of the things that we think is really important is if artists can use Circuit Python, then that's a success. So this is uh, the latest from Mr. K, uh, also known as Extra Sleepy. And um, it's an engineered sandwich. It's a little rechargeable light sculpture that CircuitPython controls the uh, RGB LEDs. And it um, is in a series of projects that this artist did. The other one was the Pi Portal that will display recalled toys on a toy that itself was recalled. So that was kind of cool. Next up, um, this Wednesday, and I'll have some um, more programming notes for our shows for the month, because folks were asking. So this Wednesday, which is December 11th, 8 p.m., Particle Senior Manager of Developer Relations, Brandon, is going to be on the show. Um, Particle, which is uh, a Feather format IoT device. They're gonna, we're going to be talking about machine learning. We're going to be talking about Feather format. We're going to talk about CircuitPython. We're going to be talking a lot of stuff. Um, and that's this week. And then next week is the Ada Box unboxing with this uh, maybe magical secret Circuit Python device, if you already don't know what it is. And then on Christmas Day and then also on New Year's Day, we decided to do shows as well. So you'll see show and tell on those days. So if you're interested in stopping by, showing some Circuit Python stuff, um, we'll be doing that and more. And then last up, Thanks everyone who's uh, contributing to the newsletter that goes out. We also put it on the blog. Uh, it also could get emailed to you. You can also view it in GitHub. Um, we've gotten lots of tips and more. So this is why the newsletter continues to grow. And there is a lot going on in the world on Python and hardware. So thank you everyone. And uh, that's community news for the week. Awesome. Thank you so much, Philip. Thank you right. for doing the newsletter every week and the community news as well. Yeah, it's super fun. <laughs> as a very small part of everything you do for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thanks. Speaking of, I have to go to the next meeting. Um, we're going to be manufacturing some uh, a new a new CircuitPython device. And if you watch the Twitters and watch, um, I'll, I'll drop it in the chat later today, but it's uh, another one that's getting added to the family. Sweet. And yeah, so that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to go do now. Awesome. All right, bye, folks. Bye. Okay, state of circuit Python in the libraries. This is a chance for to, us to take a the look at the numbers um, and get an idea of the health of the project. So overall, um, I'm taking time codes, which is slowing me down. Uh, overall, we had 31 pull requests merged from 12 different authors. So uh, thanks to those authors. I think all the names look familiar, so that's awesome that we have a, a core group of 12 authors that are doing stuff. Uh, we had eight reviewers who are also a core group of folks, so thank you to both all of the 
all, all of the authors and all of the reviewers. Uh, and we also like to say that uh, reviewing is a great way to get started. You see somebody has changed the library that you've worked for on for your project, download the latest code that they're proposing and make sure your project works with it and chime in. Let us know that that is still working, uh, is super helpful. So that's a great way to get started. Um, issues wise, uh, we had 21 closed issues by 12 people and 12 opened by 12 people. So again, we had a lot of people involved. So thanks again to all those folks. And uh, we're net down closed issues, which is awesome. And I don't think the core contributed that, to that very much, but we will see shortly. Uh, overall, uh, we're close to a beta one, I would say. Uh, we've had a lot of refinement on the BLE side and things are improving a lot. Um, so maybe this week, maybe next week, we'll see a beta one, which should be pretty late game beta. I think, uh, once this BLE stuff settles out and we have bonding, I think we're going to make a push to do, uh, to do a five Oh release and, and get it stable because it's, it's really awesome. There's a lot of good stuff and we want to get that out to everybody. So good things. Uh, library side, we just hit 200. Uh, which is amazing, and congrats to all, the, all of the library folks. Uh, really appreciate it, and it's a sign that we have a really healthy ecosystem around CircuitPython as well. Um, so thank you to everybody who's contributed on the library side. Okay, let's talk core. Core-wise, we had eight pull requests merged from four different authors uh, with three different reviewers, so thanks again to all those folks. Uh, we have nine open pull requests, which is actually not too bad. A couple of those are in the last week, so that's good as well. Uh, and we have one, the longest one is 127 days old, which isn't too bad. Um, if you want to full, see a full list of pull requests and how long they've been open, check the notes doc for that. Uh, issues wise in the core, we've had eight closed issues by four people and six opened by six people. So we are net down two, which is great uh, for a total of 205 open issues. So we've definitely been trending upwards, but uh, we have lots of good ideas and things that we want to do. I'm not too worried about that trend, uh, and we should be able to knock some of the HID Beely stuff out as well in the next couple weeks. Um, active milestones, we have seven issues without a milestone, which uh, is kind of the thing that we'd like to, to keep track of, but uh, what we'll find is that as we focus ourselves more on bun bug hunting and stabilizing, we'll pay, pay more closer attention. Uh, pay closer attention to these active milestone numbers. So, um, yep, if you want to see all of the issues, uh, there's a link in the notes doc on all of these issues. Uh, in the notes doc, we also have download stats, and they're split out by board and by language. So if you want to see the details of that, uh, check out on our notes. Um, overall, we've had 21,379 downloads of 410, which has been our stable release for a while. Um, and then on the beta zero side, which is our latest unstable release, we've had 943 downloads. So it tends to creep up as people try it. But uh, again, if you haven't taken that leap and given it a try, I, we encourage it. Uh, let us know what issues you find when you do that. And with that, I will hand it over to Katni for library update. Excellent. Thanks, Scott. Mm -hmm. So in over the course of all the libraries, we have had 23 pull requests merged in the last week by 10 authors and eight reviewers, thanks to everybody who's been contributing there. Uh, we have 37 open pull requests, some of which have been around for quite a while. Um, we need to make some time to go through these and figure out what we want to do. Um, but we do have some recent ones as well. So if you are interested in getting started with contributing to CircuitPython, uh, this is a good place to start. You can take a look at what these pull requests are doing. You can test them. Uh, you can even just check them for syntax or uh, typos, which we sometimes miss. Um, so anything like that is, is a good way to get started. And if you are unfamiliar with Git and or GitHub, we have guides for that and we are always available to help you. We want you to be able to contribute, so we will put the effort in to help you get there. Um, so we had 13 issues closed by 10 people and six open by six people, leaving 134 open issues across all the libraries. If you want to see a list of those issues, you can go to circuitpython.org slash contributing. Um, you can also see a list of all of the open pull requests and uh, a list of library infrastructure issues, um, which is us keeping track of making sure that our libraries are all up to a particular standard. Um, all of those are great ways to uh, get started with contributing. 
uh, which is why that's what we called the page. Um, we had a number of new libraries uh, in the past week, and which is what got us to 200, and uh, a list of um, updated libraries as well. So if you want to see those, check out the notes doc. And that's where we are with the libraries. Awesome. Thank you, Katni. And with that, we're going to Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance for us to say thank you to folks for the work that they've been doing within CircuitPython and broader communities. Uh, we're not going to say, like, let's not thank that person for what they're doing. Uh, so we want to hear what has mattered to you and uh, what you think is interesting. So uh, we'll do this as a round robin, as I said a bit earlier. Uh, so I will start and then we'll go down the list of the folks in the voice channel. Uh, if you're missing the meeting and want to do hug reports, just drop them in the notes and I will read them off in alphabetical order. Uh, if you are in the voice chat, I suggest following along in the notes just in case there is somebody who is missing the meeting but is alphabetically before you because that's how we, we end up sorting it. Um, and... If you are in the meeting but don't want to speak, uh, you can either drop in the notes or just let us know you're lurking and we'll skip over you. So uh, with that, I will start uh, after I take a time code. Wow, I did not hit the right buttons. <laughs> or I hit the wrong buttons or the right buttons in the wrong order. Uh, OK, so first, uh, thank you to Carter for quickly splitting out the NeoPixel spy stuff into its own library. Uh, this was a thing that we uh, spotted last week where we are adding uh, the functionality of transmitting NeoPixels over SPY to the core NeoPixel library, which was ends up being included in a bunch of builds. So we asked that to be split out so that it wouldn't be built into builds. So Carter was super responsive to that. So thanks to Carter uh, for doing that. Uh, thanks to Jeff Epler for improving the translation compression. I uh, got about a 1K of code size back based on that. Uh, a really cool, great idea, and good implementation. So thanks to Jeff for that. Um, thanks to Dan for all the BLE reviews and, and hard work there. And uh, thanks to Katni for raising the hard fault issue with the BLE stuff and testing the version once I thought I had fixed it. Really cool to be able to do that. Uh, thank you to Crayola for continuing work on Pixel Buff. I know it's been a long time coming, but I'm excited to see that make progress. Uh, so, uh, Crayola, please let me know if you ever do get hung up. I, I think we're so close. Uh, and lastly, I uh, wanted to give a shout out to Foamy Guy on the Adafruit forums. Just been really helpful with other folks. And when I go on there to see all the new stuff, there's been some stuff that's already been answered from Foamy Guy. So, thanks again to them. And with that, let's loop around and go to Brent. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Cool. Um, let me scroll back. I scrolled all the way up by mistake. <laughs> uh, and there's so many people in the meeting. Um, uh, hug report to uh, Carter and Lady Ada for MCP work. I'm actually playing with it right now. Um, Jerry for spinning up a uh, working LoRa packet example with like interrupts in CircuitPython. <laughs> It's really cool, and it's something that I've been interested in. I'm curious to see how far you get with it. Or if you don't want to get too far, let me know, and I'll take it farther. Um, and then Scott and Dan for continued BLE work. And I'm enjoying watching uh, C. Grover find some creative uses, like for the Pi badge as a base. Um, they've been doing some interesting work with like a robot platform, and I'm curious to see what else is in the work. That's it. Awesome. Thanks, Brent. OK. Carter is lurking, so we're going to see Grover, who wasn't able to make it. Uh, but C. Grover says, uh, Hug reports to Maker Melissa, Carter, and Tan Newt for nudges and support with my Cricket and Pi Badger PRs. I'm now slightly less dangerous and more comfortable when Travis talks back to me. <laughs> and uh, also thanks to Lady Ada for encouraging me to step even further out of my coding comfort zone. So that's from C. Grover. Charles is lurking for Hug reports only. And uh, so let's go to Dan. Hi, sorry, Frank. <laughs> Couldn't find the button. Um, thanks no to Scott for um, continuing to have. We have dis weekly discussions practically about things, the BLE API and how things should work and what's wrong and things like that. Those are very helpful. Um, thanks to Thea Codes, also known as Stargirl. Uh, who is um, has been hanging out in Discord and 
uh, has a number of good ideas about um, API changes and code, uh, nice how to do things nicely in Python and things like that. It's great to have a real Python expert in Discord. Mm -hmm. um, thanks to Katni, who um, has been suffering through BLE errors of various kinds and has been finding errors, and it's extremely helpful to have this kind of um, commentary as we try to get things to work. So thank you. And uh, thanks again this week to Jeff Epler, who is continuing to submit all kinds of pull requests and fix things that have been technical debt for a long time. OK, thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. OK, we have a few lurkers. And let's go to Higher Effect. Uh, just a standard um, group hug this week for everybody helping out with the testing and work on the STM32 port. Cool. Thank you. All right. Phil says, hugs to everyone who worked on Blinka. I'm able to control my Sphero rover with a Raspberry Pi because of it. And Jacob T is lurking. So yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Hi. Uh, oh, I just scrolled away. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I wanted to thank Stargirl and Jerry for uh, their patience testing the NeoPixel stuff, and especially Stargirl. I spent about 20 minutes testing the wrong release of CircuitPython and saying, no, it works fine for me. <laughs> uh, so, uh, And then thanks to two people on GitHub. I don't know if they have names here on Discord, but Yuri Shaked and Dar Scott have... Um, both been providing feedback on the MP3 PR and then discovering other audio problems that are specific to the NRF that I will be working on. And uh, I've been learning KiCad the last week or so. So if any of you developers are listening, thank you so much for writing it. Um, you know, it's another way for me to use free software instead of uh, proprietary software as I go about the tasks that I want to do. So that's always wonderful to do and to get off of proprietary. Uh -huh. Yeah, and if you have KiCad questions, let me know. All right, go ahead, Jerry. Um, you know, thanks to, to Jeff Epler for the, the quick turnaround on that NeoPixel issue. Um, it's always, always nice to get <laughs> things resolved like that. And um, and Dan and Scott, again, for all the amazing uh, BLE work. It's coming fast and furious. Great stuff. Um, to uh, two BNDY five for the our NRF twenty four L one library in the community bundle. Um, lots of been playing with that a little bit and having having fun. And just uh, I think I've done this even before, but the uh, whoever you know was responsible for the the uh, proliferation of the Stemma Quick compatible connectors. That really is a nice addition. It makes makes life really simple. Um, really do appreciate that that now being part of the environment. Yeah, I think that's Lamore and. Uh sedacious that right. can get the most really. credit for that awesome all right let's go to katney all right so uh hug report to phil b for helping me with sorting out how to deal with level shifting a lot of neopixels in a compact form factor using circuit python to Dan for a ton of help with my Circuit Playground Bluefruit project by answering endless questions, slimming down my error handling, and going over my final code. Thank you for your patience as well. Uh, to Scott for the hard fault handler crash fix. To Crayola for coding my animation ideas into the LED animation library, including functionality that streamlined my project code, and for helping with some flow control in my project. To John Park for coming up with a list of suggestions for the LED animation library and to Carter for finding an issue with the PyPI install in one of the CircuitPython libraries and getting those sneaky missing commas added mm -hmm. back in to fix it. Sneaky. All right, let's go to King or North. Uh, hello there. Yeah, uh, hug reports are pretty simple this week. Uh, thanks to Jerry for all his help when I started playing with the BLE and found that communications didn't work, and for Dan... Also, a hug report for him for stepping in on that and uh, starting to get the uh, learn guides sorted out with the correct code, which uh, works much, much better now. And thanks to JP for the uh, good hide-and-seek uh, tutorial. That worked very well. And for hug report to Katni, answering the question uh, that the Feather 
NRF52840 uh, does work well as the uh, transmitter. I guess that's the client uh, for advertising. Uh, just have to get the NeoPixel working on it now. I see somebody pulled that on the learn, learn guide for that particular board. Uh, so that part isn't working, but everything else is working well. That's it. Awesome. And I think we fixed the NeoPixel thing in the latest. Like, that's what Jeff, I think, just fixed. But... The NeoPixel thing I fixed was specific to SAMD parts. Ah, okay. It shouldn't have affected the uh, NRF. So that could be something else. If it's not filed as an issue, make sure it's filed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll have to uh, do some learn guides because i got to learn more about how to do the GitHub uh, polls and all that. <laughs> okay, let us know if we can help. Awesome. Thank you both. Okay, let's go to Crayola. So uh, an indirect hug to JP for the ideas for the Adafruit LED animation library passed along via Catney. And a hug to you, Scott, for your suggestion on how to fix up PixelBuff and for the offer to help get me unstuck as needed, which I will be taking you up on. Sweet. All right. Thanks, Crayola. Okay, let's go to Maker Melissa. Hello. Um, let's see where we are. Uh, first of all, I'll hyper report to, you, to Scott for helping me with the ANCS demo, getting that running. Uh, hug report to Jepler for uh, the impressive NeoPixel fix. <laughs> I was looking at that code, and I thought it was pretty impressive. <laughs> uh, and then a hug report to Gertie, Fig, Tintin, 10, CRBN60, Don Pinko, and Lady Ada for your Blink PRs this last week. That's and epic. That's <laughs> yeah. Are we not counting Blinka in our stats? Maybe we should. No, I don't think we are. Ah. Well, we should take it's a look at that. It's starting to gain some popularity recently. Yeah, maybe maybe we need a, a third category, and then you can share with uh, Katni and I to have uh, in the state of CircuitPython. We could have a Blinka section. Sounds good. Cool. Well, keep up the great work with that. And thanks. All right, let's go to Sedacious. Can you hear me? Yes. Excellent. Uh, I am... Um... Going to give a hug to Dylan, uh, the Hirata, for getting started on migrating the CircuitPython libraries to GitHub Actions. Uh, as of uh, earlier or late last week, um, I think this was gone over earlier in the show, we've got over 200 libraries now in the bundle, most of which need to be migrated from Travis to GitHub Actions, and he has started that process with a plum. So thank you very much for that. Nice. Um, my other Hug report is to C. Grover for uh, answering a question I had about how amplifiers work or don't. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's now. I've got three that I will read off, so I'll just take one time code and go quick. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Summer Sauce says group hug, uh, missing the meeting day job. Uh, second, Star Girl says. Uh, Hug report to Jeff Epler for working through the NeoPixel issue, also missing the meeting. And lastly, uh, Tammy Makes Things says, a hug report to Maker Melissa for encouragement to take on something I don't know how to do yet and to step out my outside of my comfort zone. So thank you all. That is hug reports. I don't think we... Did I miss anybody? I don't think so. All right. Well, that is hug reports. Let's move on to status updates. Uh, status updates is done in the same way as around Robin, and I will start. Uh, so, uh, same rules apply. Uh, let us know if you're looking or if you're text only, and we'll skip over you. No big deal. And uh, I will start. So, let me take a time code after I scroll, scroll, scroll to my stuff. Um, first and foremost, I got uh, ANCS. Uh, code checked in and a demo going. ANCS is the Apple Notification Center service, which basically allows any BLE device to access all of the little notifications that you have in your like notification center, which is what you drag down from the top on an iPad or an or, or an iPhone, um, and you can get access to like what app was it, what's the title, the subtitle, the message, that sort of thing. Uh, so I got that checked in, and there's some cool demos that uh, folks have been doing with that. Um, I fixed the Beely HID on iOS, uh, last week, which was kind of like a big mystery box of why, like it worked on Mac, but not on iOS. 
I added debugging into CircuitPython to be able to actually print out everything that the Bealy peer was reading. So uh, for HID, like what for the services that I'm giving to the phone, what is the phone actually reading back? And once I printed that out, I noticed I was sending a bunch of zeros back where I shouldn't have been. So I fixed that and iOS started working. And I left the debugging in, uh, or I, I committed that to CircuitPython under a CircuitPy Bealy verbose define, I think is what it is. Uh, so basically, if you are if you get really stuck on Bealy and want to just print out everything, you can do that. Um, I prepped a demo for John Park with ANCS and handed that off to Maker Melissa. So that should be cool. And I think that's this week's project, so that'll be neat. I also added Bealy support uh, for a magic light RGB bulb, which is a RGB bulb you can buy off Amazon that just you can connect to with BLE and you can tell it what color to be. Uh, so uh, Dan merged that this morning and tested it for me. And uh, Lamar has also ordered some. So you'll see so see, see some more stuff with that as well. Um, Katni had been uh, letting us know that she'd been hard faulting uh, the BLE code pretty regularly, which we never want a hard fault. So if you ever do see a hard fault uh, safe mode, let us know. We want to hunt those down. We want to throw an exception that Python can handle rather than crashing and burning. Uh, so Katni was letting us know that. And then when I was doing the magic light bulb, I reproduced it a lot. And the debugger was there, so I fixed it. Uh, the issue was is that um, once you connect, you t- tend to say like, oh, hey, other device, what services do you, do you have? And uh, so we what would happen is that while we were doing that service discovery process, we would actually end up disconnecting from the BLE device because devices can come and go at random. And uh, we weren't handling the case where, like, as we were doing the service discovery, it disconnected, and then we were doing the wrong thing to the degree that it crashed really hard. Uh, So that's been fixed, or that's a PR. Uh, It's coming soon. If not checked in already, I'll have to take a look later. And then lastly... um, on Friday, I started working on a packet buffer class that will take a characteristic and you'll give you kind of a more packet oriented way of using Bealy. Uh, and that will be to support both the Apple Media service, which allows you to see what songs are playing and control like play, pause, skip track, like track, all that stuff over Bealy. And then uh, that should be the same thing I need to add support for Bealy MIDI, which I've just confirmed with Lamore is something she's interested in having too. So I think I've got some space to add that uh, after this work. So we should see Apple Media Service and MIDI comes shortly uh, for Bealy as well. And with that, let's loop around to, I think it's a uh, missing meeting. So Arturo, um, time code. Arturo says, last week I worked on more verifying the IMX RT10 XX Feathers hardware. Um, I'm cleaning up the IMX RT10 XX port and uh, started using tiny USB for serial, but still need to get the mass storage to work. This week, um, Arturo is porting UF2 to the IMX RT1010 for the sole, full CircuitPython experience and uh, continue to clean up and tiny USB integration. So. That is super exciting. For folks that don't know, these chips start at 500 megahertz. Uh, So it'll be pretty wild to to see CircuitPython running on those. And uh, Arturo has been uh, teasing it on Twitter for a while. So if you don't follow Arturo on Twitter, I highly recommend it. And let's go to Brent. Hello. Um, This past week, I unblocked on a project that I was working on. Um, might go into the store this week. Uh, it's not out yet. I can't talk about it, but it's going to be a really cool project. Um, and it's going to be a kit for the store, so, which means it's time for me to work on CircuitPython again, which is really nice, uh, not nice. working on this other thing, because uh, I really like working on CircuitPython. Mm-hmm. Um, I finished a, a term project last night, which took me the probably last four days of straight work. It's about like modeling smart residential apartment buildings and creating like load with like megawatts we're not talking milliwatts anymore of um like disrupting a power grid and it's totally feasible with a building of like 600 units depending on where the building's located on the grid um and then this week i'm working with um stemma sensors and jupyter notebooks and doing interesting data visualizations and manipulations 
and I'm drawing my inspiration from a lot of the work that uh, MathWorks who makes MATLAB uh, has done with the Raspberry Pi. And that's it. Awesome. Thank you, Brent. Okay, Carter is lurking and Seagrover's text only, so I will read off Seagrover's stuff. Seagrover says, uh, last week, where did the time go? Uh, sent off four more boards to Oshpark and Osh stencils that should be here today. Uh, completed and submitted PRs for adding features to Cricut and PyBadger libraries. Uh, the changes came from the development of a PyBadger slash PyGamer front panel for a Cricut-powered robot. I built a full bevy of tests for the robot, graphics, text, sound, buttons, motors, servos, neopixels, etc. It was very challenging to find ways to use standard Adafruit CircuitPython libraries and minimize resource competition, particularly for external Stemma devices. Thinking about another Cricut PR to simplify I2C bus management when using a combination of onboard and Stemma connected I2C devices. Next week, Working on an overarching concept for using a Pi Badge, Pi Gamer, or a Pi Portal as a universal project front panel. Since they have switches, displays, and touch panels along with Stemma ports, they could save quite a bit of project fabrication time and effort. Eurorack projects may not benefit, but that just means I'll have the opportunity to design a Pi Badge board in that form factor. Here's a quick diagram of a front panel concept with robot features. And there's a link, and somebody just copied it. And then uh, we'll be piecing together and probing the post office parcel of perfectly purple pasteable PCBs that were promised to pop up presently. Uh, the, these are next gen slash final revisions of Featherwings for the Hackaday IO contest. So uh, I feel like I should reread that again just be because it's so glorious. Uh, it was, we'll be piecing together and probing the post office parcel of perfectly purple pasteable PCBs that were promised to pop up presently. Ah, say that faster. <laughs> okay, uh, and with that, let's go to Charles. Well, uh, I found that very, the idea of blue fruit, uh, I mean, BLE uh, MIDI, it would be nice to be able to detach this one key, the uh, the built-in keyboard from my uh, synthesizer, mm -hmm. so that I don't, you know, I don't have to be. I can sit with the keys on my lap, right? And have the synthesizer sitting up, because I'm building. I'm, uh, uh, I'm pl also playing around with uh, Sunvox on the Raspberry Pi, and I'm. Hmm. Hoping to figure out a way, figure out an easy way to interface the Sunbox, my Sunbox synth to uh, Python with MIDI. Hmm. So we'll see what happens. Oh, by the way, uh, I wanted to ask about uh, uh, with MIDI in, I want to be able to download a large buffer full of information. Yeah, basically, what I want to be able to do is use SysX mm -hmm. messages to download configuration right. and upload it. So that's I'm going to tinker with that and see what happens. Okay. Okay? Yeah, keep us posted. I know that yeah. I think... If I come up with a, an addition to the MIDI library, what yeah. I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just making a generalized module and then mm -hmm. ask for help to turn it into a library. Cool. Yeah. Okay. We can Thank you. That. Thanks, Charles. God bless. All right. Let's go to Dan. Okay. So um, I made a few additions to the BLE library. Uh, the after the rewrite of the API, there there were the um, advertising name wasn't included explicit uh, implicitly all the time. So I added that, and now you're going to see the correct name. Uh, when you look at the advertising devices in an iPhone or something like that. And also, you can now change the name up front before you start advertising to whatever you want. So uh, that's convenient. Also, there's latent support for transmit power. It says what the transmit power is, but you can't actually change it now. Not that anybody has asked for that, but eventually we'll, we'll provide that. Um, we wanted to add buffer size and timeout stuff to the UART service, but it turns out it's quite tricky uh, due to the internal structure. So Scott has some ideas about that. Um, I had I had submitted an initial PR, and then it turned out it wasn't working out properly. Um, 
one thing that we note with BLE that everybody notes is that uh, because you're depending on another computer, if your connection to that computer goes awry in some way, then you get an error. And this causes a lot of the code you have to write to have to catch different kinds of errors, uh, which is not usually true when things are hardwired. Usually you don't expect your I2C sensor to, for instance, disappear spontaneously. Um, so uh, I started, uh, I made a simple change so that when you try to disconnect, if you're already disconnected, it won't complain that you're already disconnected. So it's so-called item potent. And uh, I also have some ideas for uh, simplifying, wrapping all the error handling up and making it disappear for the simplest cases so that it'll be much easier to write simple BLE applications. Um, and finally, I, uh, in sort of gross code work, I'm working on uh, doing a lot of refactoring on the internals of CircuitPython so that the different regions of flash memory, where the firmware goes, where the file system goes, and so forth, they are all specified in a linker scripts and in other places about the sizes and locations of those things. And I'm parameterizing all of those so that it'll be easy to change the sizes and it, there'll be consistency between all the places where it's specified, or so that you only have to specify it in one place. So that's going to be done soon, and that will allow us to easily specify a region to store BLEI, BLE bonding information. So there was a tremendous amount of backlog of work to get ready to do bonding, unfortunately. All right. Say, so Dan? Dan? Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, Jerry. Um, one thing that I think changed relatively recently with uh, probably with the latest BLE was if you try to start advertising when you're already advertising, you get an error. Yeah, I thought yeah. of making that item potent also. Yeah, uh, maybe think of it. I, I don't know if that's if there's a good reason for having the error, but because otherwise it adds a bunch of code to check whether you're advertising or not. Yeah, the problem the old start advertising didn't take any arguments, and right. the new one does. So it was a little bit harder to decide how to make it item potent, but I'd be interested in doing that. Okay, also. just want to bring it up. Thanks. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. I think the other thing to think about changing advertising is just the fact that stop advertising happens automatically upon connection. It's a little weird, uh, but yeah, we're thinking about when thinking about that API. Yeah. All right. Let's... Yeah, it would be nice to make it to to reduce the errors that can be caused that you have control over, basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I was also looking at the Arduino stuff, and the Arduino has this concept of like auto restarting the advertisement as well. Um, so I don't know. Maybe it's just a property of the radio of like when you're not connected to anything, advertise this stuff. Right, and you could stop advertising. That's interesting. You could stop at, you could like if you supposedly want to stop advertising, that's okay. Otherwise you advertise. That would be an interesting way right. of doing it. Right. Yeah. But then there's the thing with like Apple expects you to advertise fast or often for like the first minute and then you're supposed to throttle back so that you spend less time transmitting or something. Yeah. That's the recommendation at least. Anyway, that we're getting close to the weeds. <laughs> Let's keep going. Okay, higher effect. Uh, okay, so um, last week uh, I did a kind of a cluster of things. Um, wrapped up uh, neither the Pi board. There's two new ports that are kind of ongoing, uh, pending so just kind of final testing. Um, the uh, PYB Nano, which is uh, similar which is a similar function set to the um, MicroPython Pi board, um, but is in kind of a smaller form factor. Uh, and the, the black pill style board that is for the F4 level. Those, I've personally tested both of them pending kind of final testing. They're still in the PR stage, but those are both pretty much wrapped up uh, as of the last week. Um, also fixed a couple of minor issues that popped up with the NeoPixel, um, just in terms of timing. Uh, probably want to revisit that at some time, at some point to make it a little bit more elegant, but right now it seems to be working okay, so we're going to leave it at that for the moment. Um, and then uh, beyond that, what was the other thing? 
uh, worked on display IO. We got display IO working with the TFT screen. Um, so finally uh, got over kind of a, a phase related deep SPI analysis issue there. Um, and uh, so now that display IO is working this week, I will be working on uh, porting the meow bit, which uh, has a display and an SD card and uh, many other features that we haven't totally finished up yet. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of going to be like a, a integrated test of almost everything that's in the SCM32 port. So it should be a fun time. Awesome. Uh, so uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah, that's a good way to know what to not know what to work on. Awesome. Yeah, it'll it'll integrate basically everything that we've done: SPI, SQRT, uh, all the bus I/O features, all of the display I/O features. Can have everything. So, mm -hmm. should be interesting. Perfect. Well, thanks for all your work on that. Okay, let's go to Jeff Epler. Well, last week I overpromised and I never got uh, to anything substantial with the STM32 port. I did continue to work on the MP3 playback PR, and I worked on this uh, type safe protocol stuff that I want to use for audio sample sources. And uh, then I also ended up working on the NeoPixel timing bug that I caused. I appreciate everybody's kind remarks about that. But, uh, <laughs> I feel like I caused the problem, and then I fixed it by copying somebody else's code, um, in this, this case, out of UF2 bootloader into CircuitPython. But it looks really solid, and there are some tricks that they have to make sure that it is not dependent on the memory arrangement of the rest of the code, which was, I think, what caused the problem. Hmm. Uh, anyway, this week, I hope to finish up one or both of the TypeSafe protocols and MP3. Um, I do have a PR that I need to... No, I think I did file the PR for the PWM playback rate on NRF. Uh, all the combinations I tested are working right now with raw samples. If they don't work with other kinds of samples, that's some other kind of bug. I want to get back to looking at the USB crash that I saw on NRF and implement some of your ideas, Scott. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just a note that uh, I'm working a little extra these two weeks uh, in anticipation of working less during the holidays proper. And uh, my ongoing fun project is this uh, light guide display. It's a digit display where um, you etch numerals in glass. I've shared some concept photos over on Off Topic. And hopefully I'm going to fabricate one full set of numerals this afternoon. And I ordered these boards that I made with KiCad, and so I'm anxiously awaiting those. <laughs> it's going to be the first time I do a solder stencil because there's a half a millimeter pitch IC on them. So it uh, should be fun. I'm looking forward to getting to work on that. Is it a QFN? or? No, it is an SSOP24, but with a... Hmm. half a millimeter pitch instead of a 0.65 pitch which is the typical one right uh it's a it's a weirdo 16 output uh shift register hmm. which lets you operate one digit from just a couple of ios because you need one led for each digit right it's probably not a great pick but it's what i found and i wanted to give it a try so yeah you can drag solder it too is what i was gonna say but yeah i'll uh i've got six chips to experiment with and of course three boards so uh yeah, I'll be finding out what works and hopefully getting one that does function as designed. Yeah, between Sedacious and I, we should be able to figure it out. He has more stencil experience than I do, but I also don't have a, I don't have a good reflow oven. So. Anyway, uh, all right. Yeah, there's a reflow at the hack space that I haven't tried yet, so I'm just itching to do that. Ah, oh, lucky. Well, let us know how it goes. I will. Perfect. Okay, let's go to Jerry. Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, so, yeah, last week I started, I, there was a question came up on a forum that I'm on, on, on Discord that I answered incorrectly. Somebody asked if we supported the NRF24 LO1s, and I said, I don't think so. And uh, uh, Lady Ada chimed in and said, oh, yeah, oh, yes, we do. It's in the community bundle. So um, took a look at that and found out that for, you know, 10 bucks you can get a bunch of these things. So I got a, a bunch of them. And uh, they're fun. Now I got to figure out what to use them for. But they uh, mm -hmm. they talk to each other, and they're kind of cool. And uh, the library works works really nicely. So uh, really, a new toy. And um, 
And then I also, Jeff, uh, it found out that the new Mac OS now in the homebrew, if you go just, you know, update the um, um, GCC package, it brings in the, the latest version. So that's kind of nice. So I have that running on my Mac now. It's working fine. And let's see. Oh, then um, a question that came up on a Discord post, uh, in a GitHub post, somebody wanted to know about interrupts on a, on, on a Raspberry Pi on, on RFM69 this was. I started thinking about it and realized, well, it, it should work. And so with some encouragement again from Lady Ada and, and from the, the original poster, we played around a little bit and yeah, got an example working and it's pretty cool. So I'm really excited about doing more with that. I'll, I'll switch it over. I actually want to use it on the 9X and um, get that all working. And then once I have a good working example, we can talk about whether it, it the changes I'm making right now are minuscule to the actual library. So mm -hmm. they could easily be handled with a, an ar a keyword argument to control whether you want to invoke it or be able to use it or not or something. So mm -hmm. whether it belongs in the library is something to be discussed since it can only be done on the Raspberry Pi, not under CircuitPython. Mm -hmm. But we can cross that bridge once it all works. But it's kind of exciting to actually be using interrupts on the Raspberry Pi. It uh, works nicely. Yeah, and that's a good and place to prototype the, for sure. Yeah, and that's the uh, next week. Uh, I want to keep working on that and get ported over the 9X. And then thinking about some other devices that might be fun to, to play with the interrupts. Um, also made me think about uh, in a non-circuit Python related way. There, there's a, the Radiohead library is sort of the, the standard one used on Arduino. And there is a port to it for the Raspberry Pi. But I read through it and looking at it, it's all C++ code. But it disables the interrupts on the Raspberry Pi. So I'm not sure why. And I'd like to understand that more and look, look into it. So it might be fun to use that as well. Because if we want to do more more things with the radios on on Raspberry Pi, that that library might be really useful. Um, so then coming up again, plenty to take advantage of all this great new BLE stuff. Thanks and so much to learn about it. Same thing with the uh, NRF twenty four LO ones. So too many toys. <laughs> totally awesome. Thanks, Jerry. Okay, Katney. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so I have had a busy week. Um, worked on a Circuit Playground Blue Fruit NeoPixel project. Um, it's basically controlling uh, NeoPixel strips and the onboard NeoPixels of one CPB from another CPB, which then led to putting together animations for the LED animation library. Thank you again to Crayola for that. You can currently uh, Blink the LEDs, do a color cycle, have solid color. There's a sparkle animation, there's a comet animation, and there's so much more to come uh, currently being worked on still. So that's going to continue to grow. I started a guide for the Blue Fruit project. Um, I wrote a page on the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit guide um, on installing the basic necessary circuit python libraries and includes all the basic libs needed for many things. Um, it can be put into other guides. Uh, which should at least kind of limit um, some boilerplate explanation uh, to be able to use all the features on the board um, in, in other guides, uh, which would be helpful. And uh, but if if it's if there's a library you need for your project that isn't covered in that page, you'll still have to have an install section. But I got that up because we didn't really talk anywhere specifically about the fact that. Um, despite the fact that the CPB looks a lot like the CPX, nothing's frozen in. So we have a lot of libraries to drag over to make basic stuff work. I uh, found a CircuitPython bug with Bluetooth, um, ran into the hard fault handler pretty regularly, and uh, got that issue out, and uh, Scott fixed that. Um, I helped JP with up updating some of his code to use the Circuit Playground library and helped Carter out, uh, sort out an issue with the MCP9600 not installing properly from PyPI. Uh, it turns out if you have uh, Python strings single quoted on multiple lines without commas, they concatenate, uh, commas are necessary. Mm. So that is the sneaky missing comma mm. situation. So this week uh, I need to finish up the project guide for the um, Bluefruit project, it needs images, video, um, the code itself, PR to the learn repo. I'm still handling a few um, issues uh, with some more error handling because the new error, um, 
I'm running into it uh, consistently as well. So I need to handle that and um, get the guide text finish up. However, uh, I'm realizing that this may have to wait until beta one. Um, I need to talk a little more about that, but uh, the hard fault handler thing is not, it's in master, it's not in beta zero. So um, depends on whether we want to tell people in the guide to, you know, download master or do we want to wait until beta zero or beta one rather. So we'll find out. When were you going to try to get the guide out? Wednesday. Okay. I'll have to see if we merged it into master, but we could just do a beta one right now. Okay. Like um, tomorrow we could do a beta one. All right. Excellent. Um, there's another PR that was just mentioned that I think also would need to be in there that is related to um, related to my errors as well. Um, but we can talk about that later. Okay, yep. good to know. Um, so I also need the LED animation code reviewed, merged, and released. Um, obviously, I can handle the merging and releasing, but the reviewing would be good. Um, it is currently an open PR. If anybody wants to take a look at that, let me know, and I can link it. Um, I need to, then basically after that, there's a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. There's some OLED uh, stemma fritzing objects I need to do. There's a new uh, feather wing uh, that needs a fritzing. I'm going to be updating the Circuit Playground library to check for what type of board and then import the appropriate modules. So we're going to be using a slightly different um, import format uh, for examples that can work on both um, Bluefruit and Express. However, the current way of doing things will still work. Um, and then update all of the um, Circuit Playground examples in the Circuit Playground repo to use the new format so that we're not duplicating examples. Um, and that way, that list of examples will work with both. I need to complete my PI setup on that new NeoPixel SPI library. And then the there was a fix to the MCP9600. Um, well, the fix, it was fixed to other things. That means that the MCP9600 now works on Python um, using Blinka on Raspberry Pi. Uh, it was an I2C issue that uh, Lamar ran into again and decided it was just time to actually fix it instead of doing another workaround or holding off on something. So that guide needs to be updated to show Python usage um, now that it actually works. And uh, after that, I don't know. That'll find out Wednesday what what my next thing is. Awesome. Well, keep up all the awesome work, Kenny. Thank you. Will do. Okay, let's go to Crayola. So um, last week, I managed to find more bugs in PixelBuff by trying to use it. It's surprising what you find when you're actually trying to use your own code. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Welcome to my life. So, yes. <laughs> so I pushed those fixes up, and I think at this point it, it behaves itself. The only thing really remaining is to figure out a better way to deal with calling uh, sub pixels. Um, so we're going to jump out of order here because I already posted screenshots of it. Um, in order to test animations, I got tired of always uploading the code to a piece of hardware. So I wrote a fake NeoPixel thing that uses ANSI code to show me pixels, um, which made it much faster to make or keep changing the animations. Um, I'll be putting that up in a repo somewhere so that other people can use it if they want fake pixel strips. Hmm. Um, and then um, tried to find a way to address your suggestion, Scott, um, but I ran into circles for a bit. Um, I've, I've abandoned that uh, for a little bit to focus on animations because the Christmas tree really needs them. Right. And then I uh, spent a bunch of time tweaking things in the uh, uh, Adafruit Light Animations Library, and I have tons of ideas of how to make that even more powerful, which will keep getting added to as I work on the tree. Some of the things that are in there include um, the concept of an animation sequence or an animation group, which will let you sort of predefine how your animations will happen. And I'm going to make it so that animations can trigger the next step in a sequence and things like that. Hmm. And I've got a bunch of suggestions from JP and ideas from Katni and stuff that I probably want to do once I've got the strips up on the tree. Nice. Um, which is sort of go, leads into what I'll be working on this week. Um, and then I do need to actually work on PyPixelBuff so that we can make sure that we have a backwards compatibility path for those boards that don't have PixelBuff built in and so that um, we have a good story there. And then 
Um, I need to address the build failure for the new Pixel Buff API branch because of the out of flash issue, which should be as simple as merging Jeff's fixes. And that's what I've been up to and will be up to. Great. And uh, let me know when you want me to take a look at that and poke around it at it. Will do. Cool. Thanks. Okay, Maker Melissa. Hello. Let's see here. Okay, last week I merged a bunch of Blinker related PRs. I think it might have been a record. <laughs> and then I uh, went ahead and added 11 new blocks to the Blink section of circuitpython.org. Um, I fixed auto versioning on Adafruit Python Pure IO. Uh, which, because we had a pull request on that, uh, I realized it needed to be manually updated before. Hmm. Yeah, that's better. Uh, added rotation to the TFT Gizmo library and cleaned up the code a bit and fixed an auto doc issue that was causing Travis to fail. Um, I added image function to the IS31 L3731 library. I uh, created three pillow examples for that library. Uh, and I worked on a new guide page for describing those examples for that library. Um, and I also worked through getting the ENCS example running on the Circuit Playground Blueprint. Um, this week, I'm going to finish up the guide page I was working on. I'm going to work with John Park to uh, make sure we get a good ANCS demo going, so just a little few tweaks probably. Um, I'm going to work on fixing the Pi Badger with external fonts. And I'm going to start on the, if I have time, I'm going to start on the AT16K33 display guide updates. Sweet. And that's it. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. Let's, yeah. Let's go to Seditious. Alrighty. So last week, I worked with a guy from 60SOX, and I also... Uh, finished up the drivers for the ICM 2649, both of which are um, IMUs from ST. The ICM 2649 is uh, stands out as being especially cool because it can handle up to 4,000 degrees per second of rotation and 30 Gs of acceleration, which is pretty neat. Most uh, IMUs do half of both of those figures, um, so it's pretty interesting, I think. Um, so yeah, I shipped the drivers for both of those as long as, um, helping Lady to get the, um, the driver for the new, um, Alexis, uh, thermal sensor, uh, shipped as well. Uh, let's see. Um, I started last week and over the weekends reorganizing my office, um, from literally the ground up. So, uh, it's not so much of a mess anymore. But uh, the mess will continue until I can paint and do some construction and stuff like that. So that's fun. What are you doing? Um, what are you doing? So uh, I'm going to add insulation or, yeah, um, insulation to the ceiling. I'm going to put up like a, um, uh, just like a, a fabric uh, diffusion thing with a bunch of uh, LEDs behind it on the ceiling. Probably going to repaint, uh, do some electrical to get some solid circuits coming back here because of mm -hmm. how much I use it and my house is old. Um, and just, you know, painting and redecorating and moving my desk around and making better use of the space and optimizing for how much I use what I use and what I don't. Right. Yeah, I've yeah. been thinking about doing an office reorg myself, so. The, the key thing that I've kind of helped in the meanwhile doing is like move things away from my desk and then the things that stay close to my desk as I use them will have places near my desk and the things that don't won't. Right, right. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, I think I'm going to have like a little la lazy Susan on my desk for um, miscellaneous stuff. Mm -hmm. Um just to make a better use of the space. Cause like I have this humongous desk that inevitably just fills up with junk if I don't constantly prune it. So that's going to be a, a challenge to deal with. Yeah. So yeah, uh, let's see this week. I'm uh, going to quickly work on the MCP 4728, which is a um, four in one 12 bit DAC. 
Um, that should be relatively straightforward and fun to play around with. Um, in doing so, I'm going to assemble some MCP2221 boards, which are like the, the sweet kind of upgraded version of the um, FT232H. Um, I think Carter was working with that earlier, so I'm excited with that. Uh, I got a whole bag full of boards to work on after the um, 4728, so I'll get to that some point in time. And then, of course, I'm going to continue with my office reorganization. Um, I have a old year's resolution, uh, and that is to make a STEMI QT board in uh, KiCad sometime this week. I've been meaning to learn KiCad, and I've just been putting it off. So now's the time. I'm not waiting till January. I'm gonna do it now. Awesome. That's it for me. Sweet. Thanks, Sedacious. All right, we have a couple folks who are not in the meeting. And I didn't see any in the weeds topics, but if you meant to add one, please do so now. Otherwise, we are going to cruise through there. Um, the first uh, folks that's not here is Summersoft. Summersoft says, uh, Thanksgiving week, I fought through a nasty head cold and got maybe five lines of code written. Uh, last week, was stuck at home troubleshooting some car issues and uh, took the extra week off from coding. Burnout had creeped in further than I realized, which is exactly what you should do. Take time off. And uh, this week, reassess project priorities. Having seen that Dylan is moving the Travis to Actions transition along, I'll likely get back to that for Adabot and CircuitPython.org slash contributing as well. So thank you, Summersoft. And please, please, please take as many breaks as you need. We don't uh, we don't want to see anybody burn out. And uh, lastly, we have uh, Tammy Makes Things. Uh, Tammy says... Uh, Starting to figure out what I, it would take to implement a CircuitPython library for the Maxim Max 3010X pulse oximeter sensor, which sounds really cool. And with that, uh, in the weeds, I will just put a time code and just advertise it. Uh, but in the weeds is the section we have at the end that's geared towards any sort of longer form questions, comments, things that we want to talk about. We did a little bit of that during status updates and hug reports, so no big deal. Um, but the way that works is if you do have a topic that you want to talk about, uh, jump in the notes doc, add it there, and we'll cover it uh, at the end of the meeting that it's for. And with that, I'm going to wrap up. Uh, this has been the CircuitPython community meeting for December 9th, 2019. Uh, it was recorded, so beware of that. Let me know if that surprises you and you don't want it to be published. But uh, the video goes out on the Adafruit YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Adafruit, along with a link to the note stock so that you can skip around to the places you want to hear. And also, if uh, you are a podcast person, the audio gets taken out of that video and published as a podcast feed, if that's your jam, uh, kind of something I tend to like. So uh, if you're a podcast person, take a look for that as well. I think next week we are on normal schedule. So uh, as always, or almost always, this meeting is uh, happens at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern on Mondays, uh, unless there's a U.S. holiday on that Monday, and then typically we'll push it to a different day. Um, if you want to hear updates about the meeting, get a link to the note stock early. Uh, please let us know you'd like to be a member of the CircuitPythonistas group on the Adafruit Discord channel, and we'll let you know about that and you'll get notified when we ping CircuitPythonistas. Uh, if you're not on the on the Adafruit Discord channel, we highly recommend it. You can go to the URL adafru.it slash discord to join and we'd love to see you there. And with that, I think it's it. So thanks again to everybody who attended and we'll see you all next week. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye. Oh, see you next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye.